every third uh, difficult control made one minute mistake, then it would be probably a good investment, like taking a safer route. I would go into the lake, swim for a bit, and then <laughs> back in there again. Yeah, so in, instead of learning to slow down when when I need to, I instead learned to, to read the map better when I needed to. Why sometimes it happens that you do not take the best route choice? Of course, I think about the difficulty of the route. What could be um, hard in this route and where do I have to be really sure where I am? Yeah, yeah there's also quite a lot of climb. But I think I would like to attack the control a bit from the left. Hi, this is Tom and today I have a double treat for you. I'm super excited to be talking in a moment with both Simona Abersold and Kasper Fosser. When I heard that they are going to be together for uh, a few days, I couldn't pass on this opportunity and we will be talking about the topic of picking the right route choices for the long legs um, in the forest. So basically, usually very useful for any kind of log distances. And we will be trying to figure out how to get the legs always right, how, what, what elements to look for, and when to read the legs ahead of time so that you don't have to slow down or maybe even stop to pick it up. Uh, so I think that a lot of interesting things are about to be discovered. Stay with us and let's get right into the interview. Today we are talking, or I am talking, with two very um, prominent, famous athletes. Lots of successes between both of them. Simona Abersol, that was already a guest on our channel before, and Kasper Fosser, uh, currently the leader of the world ranking, uh, so absolutely the top uh, runner inside the orienteering world. And today is a uh, um, very interesting topic, at least for me, because we're going to be talking about advanced route choices and what to do to get the most out of uh, the legs that are placed before us when we are running in a forest with the map, how to pick the best route choice or how to try to pick the best route choice because it's not always possible to find the best one, especially when you're running, you're tired and the terrain is rough. So these are the things we want to explore today. And these are the things we want to focus on and find out what we can learn from the best. So welcome, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Happy to be here. Uh, awesome. Thanks, for, thanks a lot for joining. And without further ado, I will just go into the first question that I have for you. So how do you go about preparing for um, the kind of legs or long route choices that you might be facing during the competition before the competition. So what I mean is, of course, you could be preparing for this before every race that is ahead of you. Usually we're talking, of course, about the long races, right? So not middle distances, not sprint distance. Well, actually sprint distance is a different story. So let's just focus on the forest for now. So middle distance is a little bit different, right? But when it comes to long legs, do you always look at the terrain and look at the old maps to analyze what the course setter might uh, surprise you with? Uh, or is it just done before some major competitions? And if so, which ones? Yeah, for me, I would say it's just before major competitions. And there I look a lot at maps and try to uh, find different route choices and also find the routes there and compare them to each other and also try to maybe look at Google Maps, Google Street View, and see from there if the terrain is is uh, nice to run in, if there's good runnability, bad runnability, and uh, yeah, try to solve the route choices like that. And for me, I usually do some uh, preparations for every race, uh, um, but uh, on the smaller races, it's usually just that I yeah uh, look at the map uh, a couple of days ahead and maybe make a couple of route choices or look at some world courses or uh, something similar and just just have kind of an idea where I will go. Uh, for the big competitions like uh, like uh, World Cup this weekend, uh, uh, I've been looking at the map already since uh, since this winter and uh, for uh, World Champs, I usually uh, start looking at routes and uh, and uh, what type of terrain is, uh, is uh, a, it's going to be already like uh, several years ahead of the race, usually. Uh, so, oh wow! Um, 
uh, so it depends a bit, but uh, there's definitely a lot of work put into the the big races. Yeah. Awesome. Good to hear this. And do you do it by yourself, or do you have, for example, someone that you can hand the map and say, "Challenge me. Find me the route choices that uh, I will struggle with." Yeah, sometimes, but I would say it's mostly me that draws the route choices and tries to figure out where to go. Sometimes the coaches, sometimes Kasper, sometimes uh, my dad also likes to to draw different route choices and prepare us for the races. But um, yeah, it's usually myself. Uh -huh. yeah. I uh, yeah, I also end up doing most of it myself, I guess. But uh, I think it's definitely better when someone else does it. So you you don't have any uh, yeah. So you just you just get the route choice and. Uh, uh, and can like uh, uh, take the best route without having to like plan it yourself because then it's kind of uh, uh, not it's, really it's the same it's thing. It's less tricky, yeah. right? When you yeah, do it it's by less yourself. Yeah. But I think um, for me, it helps a lot to, to do it myself because then you think more about it. Yeah, that's true. So uh, sometimes I make legs where I, where I try to find a leg where all the routes are or where I think all the routes will be at the same time. So yeah. like, okay, if the control is a bit to the right, I will take the right route choice. And if it's a bit to the left, I will take the left route choice. And, and uh, I also try to like find out what routes uh, or where is it uh, very likely that we have a, have a route choice. So if there's some passage of, uh, like this weekend, there's some passage of uh, railway uh, probably at a long distance. And then you know, okay, from that passage, where will you... Where where could it be a route choice and uh, and uh, focus on those areas where you uh, where you're most sure that the the course is going to be. Absolutely, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I just want to emphasize here for everybody watching that um, both of you have mentioned that there's quite a lot of work that you put into it. So I would definitely assume that this part of the preparation for at least the most important races is quite important, right? Definitely. All right. So um, moving on, uh, when you're already in, in, in the race, you, you're already with the map, how far ahead do you look into the route choices? As far as possible, but it's not always possible to plan that far. Um, yeah, it depends a bit on the terrain, of course, and the difficulty. But yeah, I try to plan as far as possible and also long route choices. Yeah, it, it depends a bit on the terrain. If there's uh, if there's a lot of uh, possibility to read the map uh, far ahead, like like at Wook in Czech Republic last year, for example, where we had this long leg to the second control, and you had uh, like fifteen minutes just running on the road, then then I uh, there I tried to like um, look at the whole course uh, as soon as possible. So I, I think I had looked at. At least uh, most of the course uh, or most of the difficult route choices already to the second control. So it depends a bit. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's usually nice to get a bit of an overview of the map when you are somewhere in the start of the course, so you know where where you have to put in some time to really decide the routes. Yeah, it absolutely makes sense. Um, so basically, you try to look at all the long legs further ahead, as long as you have time to do that. So as long as the current route choice allows you to focus a little bit more on the map rather than searching for the control that uh, you're currently running to, right? Let's say that you have this long leg somewhere at the beginning and you're running along part of the leg along the road. So it, it's, it's easy to navigate and you have the time to look ahead and you are, you are able to plan the route choices for um, the following controls, let's say even to the end of the course, all, all the important ones, right? Maybe not without the, the short ones that um, don't require that. Do you feel that later on when you get to this leg, you still remember the route choice that came to you when you were running from point, point one to point B? Yes, definitely. A good you example is maybe that. nah, or maybe some micro route choices, but the route choice itself, I think, if you go left from the control or right from the control, that is quite clear and that I remember quite well. But yeah, a good example is long distance at AOC this year, where I planned or I had already planned almost the whole course until the start point, because it was 500 meters to the start point. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't look 
at the root that closely anymore. So I just knew, oh yeah, I decided to go left there. So I go left. But during that time to the start point, I didn't have time to check the route that accurately. So yeah. I didn't see one um, embargoed area on the route and ended up there. <laughs> so I had to to um, decide, decide where to go from there and kind of save myself and save the route. So I think it's better to, if you plan ahead, then you have to look at the whole route again before you execute it, I think. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I've asked because <laughs> for me, it sometimes happens that, you know, I, I plan ahead and especially the one of the last legs, I sometimes get to it and I'm like, all right, I know I analyzed analyze it before, but I don't remember what I picked. <laughs> I mean, I have exactly. to pick it again. <laughs> all right, so anyway, um, it, it's pretty obvious um, for, for more advanced runners that you should be looking at the map ahead when you have those uh, longer periods of time running along the road. But are there any other moments when you think that it's a good opportunity to um, analyze the map into the future? Like, for example, the thing that comes to my mind, which I always uh, repeat to the athletes, is when you're up the hill and it's super hard and you can't run because it's so steep, walk, but at least read the map ahead and use this time properly. So does anything else come to your mind when you think about it? Yeah, like the the most important thing that uh, that makes you able to read ahead is that you 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 have something that guides you towards uh, the next point you're going. Uh, yeah. So you don't have to. There's a period of time where you don't really have to pay that much that much attention to the map. So True. maybe there's a ridge or a depression or something that that guides you along. It doesn't have to be a path, but it can do. Yeah, of course it can it can also be a hill. You know that you're going on top of the hill. Okay, it's just. One minute of uphill running, I can read the map. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, it's a it's a big part of uh, the route choice uh, complexities that you have to um, also be uh, also know where you can read the uh, the map or, or read ahead. It's like uh, like finding out uh, or like also planning where to read the map is uh, part of the the challenge so uh, yeah I, I totally agree beautifully said does it happen that for example you have to slow down or stop some time to read the route choice so uh, you know the, the course setters they know that if they give you a long route choice somewhere at the beginning it will be easier towards the end of the race so it's it sometimes happened that the beginning of the course even for the long distance is quite challenging i would say it's middle-ish right so the controls are difficult and you have to really focus hard on realizing the current route choices so that you don't have a lot of time to look ahead. Um, and then suddenly, finally, you come to this long lag and you didn't have time to prepare for it earlier. Uh, do you just pick the first thing that comes to your mind or do you even sometimes maybe stop to find the best route choice? I usually stop. Um, I remember several times where I really stopped at the control and there's even pictures of me <laughs> standing there quite for a for a quite long time. Um yeah, one example in Norway 2019 where I just didn't know where to go because I was really surprised that it was kind of a Swiss route choice and not just straight through the forest and kind of like micro route choices around the small hills and knolls. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, if I don't know where to go, then I then I used to stand still. Yeah, I usually uh, never stand still at the control. E even if it uh, means that I have to slow down a bit uh, during the first part, it's still better than to stand still. Uh, so I, uh, I uh, tr try to avoid uh, standing still as much as possible, actually. Uh, what, what happens if the route choices are like, you know, left, right? And uh, you start running a little bit towards the left, but then after 50 meters, you realize, oh, crap, I need to go right because it's a better one. Uh, don't you feel that by now you're already committed to the left route choice? Do you still change it? Does it happen? I I, I try not to put myself in that position or I don't know <laughs> uh, where, I, or where, where I like start running before I've taken the route. But uh, um, yeah, of course, you, you always have to... Uh, 
take the best route from where you are. So if you started to run left and the best is to go right, then you have to turn around. Yeah, and the same goes for like uh, doing parts of the route. If you if you read the map and you realize, okay, part of this route is it's better to do, do a different uh, the decision than I had originally thought of, then uh, I can uh, change the plan. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's best to, <laughs> to, uh, to be sure of your choice before you enter the console. Yeah, of course. So by the way, uh... The thing you mentioned, it's better to be sure of the root choice that you're picking. What is the process of picking the root choice? How, how do you begin thinking about it? And what elements do you look at to to find the best one? Yeah, I try to see the big features and the contours. That's one thing that's really important to me. Um, paths and roads. And uh, yeah, maybe that the route doesn't have um, that much climb or least possible um yeah and then it depends a lot on the runability of course but that um yeah that's also the preparations that help a lot to decide the route so by preparations yeah. you mean that you kind of know what type of the terrain you're expecting and you know that if it's like for example medium green then it's better not to go into that because it's not great or exactly. if it's um, rocky ground, then it's also very uneven and it's it makes sense to avoid it when possible, right? That's, that's what you mean. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, most of the same goes for me. I, it's, it's really hard to like generalize the type of thought process when you are first choice making because it, it's uh, really different from one terrain to another. Uh, mm -hmm. So, of course, the preparations there are really important and it's it's much about uh, like looking at as many root choices as possible ahead of the competition and uh, like really having uh, having kind of an uh, like a really good intuition of what what the, what is a good root choice and then uh, kind of comes by itself when you when you uh, run the at the, the competition because you've done it so many times and yeah and it's also like kind of a calculation you do when you take a route you you're uh, trying to think how many percent can I go around to avoid uh this uh this uh, amount of reduce the runability to go the other way so um and having that kind of feeling uh, yeah that feeling and that uh, like uh, ability to calculate the route uh, is uh, yeah that's uh, um to, to be able to do that you really have to look at a lot of root choices ahead where, where do you get that feeling from uh, i mean you, you've mentioned just now that you're looking at lots of root choices to compare it but do you also for example try to test it when you're on the training camps yeah mostly the gps and then compare different routes from different runners but yeah i don't think i've ever really tested routes like just myself running back and then running the other route in czech republic i remember that we did one training where we did the same course twice and uh, we were supposed to take different routes Mm -hmm. uh, second time yeah that's exactly what i mean right but then you can kind of compare the times of course you need to try at least to run with the same place <laughs> so that it's comparable uh, but it is an interesting exercise i think yeah absolutely i i really like to like at, 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 at training camps i really like to do uh, routine sessions together with others at, from the team because when they because then we, you like you, you get like like um immediate uh um feedback from what what is the best route uh yeah. so uh i think it's really beneficial to um, to run with others on monitoring trainings especially where there's a lot of root choices sure another thing i want to ask regarding that topic is i'm usually telling telling the people that the first thing you need to start when uh, start thinking of when you're picking the root choice is where do you want to attack the, the control from so attack point right what's your attack point and then you need to figure out how to get to the attack point. Is it something that you also think about? Yeah, of course I think about like from where do I run to the control? Where is my last um, save point where I really know where I am? But I think it's more important that the route itself is good than, than that the entrance to the control is easy. Yeah, like it depends a lot of... Uh yeah the like how uh how good you are at uh at orienteering how good you are at finding finding the control and 
uh, how big of a risk it is for you to take uh, take a harder route. Mm -hmm. um, but usually, I'm I'm uh, a little offensive in my rituals making. I always just try to pick the shortest or the fastest route as possible, and then um, if it's a trickier route, then I just have to have to uh, uh, still yeah, just have to be a little more careful with the orienteering and um, like if you. Uh, it, it, it's stupid to choose a route that's 20 seconds slower because it's a little safer because then you could use those 20 seconds to really take it slow and find the control instead and then okay that, that's awesome um, because I was, I was exactly yeah. going to ask you about it does it happen yeah. that sometimes you pick knowingly the longer route choice to minimize the risk of getting the control right and what you're saying is that you would always pick the fastest not shortest but fastest route choice um even if it means the um, you know more difficult entry to the co co control itself for example or more difficult um like semi lags in between uh the one control and another right yeah yeah that's right well, of course uh uh if i if i uh wasn't as good as i am at uh, at orienteering then i would uh think a little differently if if uh, i at every every third uh, difficult control made one minute mistake, then it would be probably a good investment to in, to invest in like taking a safer route. The way I'm thinking when I'm running is that every second counts. So I always, yeah, I want to do the perfect race and then uh, I, I can't afford to lose uh, lose even uh, 20 seconds on taking a safer route choice. So, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. understandable to me. Yeah. Um, although, as you said, I, I'm working sometimes with the youth. I have I have a daughter that is 11. Yeah. So, for example, when I'm talking with her, um, it actually depends on the type of the competition we're running. But if we're running the competition that, you know, she's probably running like maybe five or six races during the year that really count. The rest for me is, even if it's competition, it's a training. So I always encourage her to pick the difficult route choices. I mean, if she makes a mistake, it's not a big deal, right? Nothing happens. And I kind of feel that it's always an investment uh, so that you can learn from it and then be better at uh, not only picking the shorter route choices or faster route choices, but also being better at actually realizing them. Uh, but I totally agree that on the level that uh, you're both at, it probably makes sense to just focus on the best ones and to just trust your abilities to get it done yeah yeah i i, I really agree with what you say there about uh, like learning to take the difficult route and uh, it, it's been a bit the same way i've been thinking about uh, uh like my speed when i was younger uh when i was running i've, I've always been just like going full speed uh, to every control and then i often made five minutes mistakes but yeah i I just uh, I I didn't want to slow down into the control because I I wanted to think that one day I'll be able to run full speed through every control without having to slow down. So what yeah. happened? Did you did, did you <laughs> learn to read? Uh, sorry, did you learn to navigate better, or did you learn to slow down when it's needed? Yeah. So in, instead of learning to slow down when when I need to, I instead learned to to read the map better when. I needed to, so <laughs> so uh, full speed, no mistakes, and just yeah. Of course, that's not always <laughs> that, the case. That's exactly what my uh, <laughs> Swedish friends told me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. Um, do you make different route choices um, while the race progresses? Does it happen that, for example, at the end of the race, you feel already tired? You feel that your um, capacity to to think clearly is a little bit lower? And then you take safer route choices, or do you still stick to you know fastest the better? And I trust in myself; I can do that. I think it's not safer route choices, but maybe different route choices from what I would take if I was still um, yeah in really good shape and feeling great. So maybe yeah, example Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. There, I would maybe. If I feel that I'm tired and the legs going uphill, more take the or rather take the route that is a bit flatter and on paths than running down to a valley and yeah, taking steep climbs. Yeah, I, I mostly just uh, think the same on uh, every route throughout the course. Uh, I, I like uh, technically, I feel that I'm 
usually just as sharp in the end of in the in the end of the race as in the beginning. Even though I'm more, more tired, I just have to, and I just know that I have to focus even harder. Um, and with that physical aspect, I'm a bit on the other side. I I want to be uh, just as physically appeared for running uphill as running flat. Uh, so it shouldn't uh, make a difference through the course whether it's all the climb or not. So like I I I hear a lot of people say uh, that uh, you should take uh, take a, a flatter route in the beginning of the course to save save your legs from the no. climb. Mm -hmm. There I think okay then then you probably not uh, then you probably haven't done enough hills for this race if that's yeah <laughs> what you're thinking. So <laughs> so uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I think it's really important to be to be physically uh, prepared for for the uh, for every race. Of course, but I think for me same... it's also important that the routes are the same or quite similar, really similar. When what I you, choose the flat route, about uh, what did they say? What, what do you mean by that? Yeah, I mean if I choose to take the flat route and the, not the steep route. Then I think it's it's really important to me that the route is the same. Like time or that wise. I think it's the same time. Yeah. 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 Uh, Not but... that I take a flatter route that it, that is like twenty seconds longer uh -huh. than the steep route, but yeah. Absolutely, but at, at the same matter. time, I I want to emphasize something that you said, Simona. That um, actually you both said it. Uh, when you combine it together, it's kind of uh, the, the conclusion from it might be that you also need to know your own strengths as a runner, right? And uh, what you are able to do and what you're not able to do. And then you can also adapt your route choices to your strengths, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. true. That's true. I, uh, uh, there was the, the study with the Swiss team uh, maybe 10 or 15 years back. Where they uh, tested all the athletes on twenty percent incline on the treadmill and flat, and there they saw there was surprisingly big differences between the abilities for runners. So some runners would, uh, would on uh, like a straight route choice with, with, with a low climb would lose one minute and uh, gain a minute going around, and the opposite for some others. So it was actually, uh, that is is actually a point. Uh, but. Uh, uh, but yeah, again, uh, you have to uh, you have to be able to uh, to be uh, specifically trained for the big competitions. Mm -hmm. uh, then the the yeah, then it will be uh, yeah. It, it it shouldn't be that you're only trained for a, for a flat uh, route choice, and you have to run you have to run a flat route choice because you're bad, badly trained for hills. Mm -hmm. You should be be well enough trained for everything that you meet in the course. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you on the professional level, uh, on a semi-professional level, or sometimes even on amateur level. Sometimes you just don't have enough time or will yeah. to train as much as, as you should. And then you also need to be aware that adapting is okay, right? And it's it's better to pick the route choice that favors your strengths rather than pick uh, the one that looks shorter, but it will the, the climb will kill you, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But... Uh, but uh... I think that uh, um, that uh, you, you you don't have to be better trained to uh, to tolerate the hills more. You just have to be more specifically trained for hills. So you can be it can be for if if you're well enough trained for hills, the flat route can be the hardest one for you. True. Uh, yeah. So it's just that <laughs> most people, of course, uh, like to avoid the hills in their training and uh, train more for the flat than in the hill. Yeah. So then, it depends how your training regime is uh, scheduled, right, and, and structured. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And if uh, if there's a if someone is really well trained for hills and uh, and uh, has almost not run any flat uh, training in the weeks ahead, then then it could be uh, tough to run a lot of flat route choices in the course. Right, he, he will be like speed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, true, true, absolutely. Uh, okay, let me look at the next one. Uh, that's your starting. That's a it's a good one. I I'm always curious about that, and I've never asked it to anyone. Uh, from from the top athletes. So does your starting minute impact the route choices? Because obviously when you start last during the competition where several, well, let's say 100 or maybe 200 runners ran the same course, you will have paths. Do you weave it in, weave it into your route choice planning or not? 
Yes. I'll, so I'll, I'll give I'll so give you an example. So before you answer, I'll give you an example. Uh, <laughs> so for example, we were preparing for the Portugal this week. Uh, sorry, this year uh, for for Jewel competition. And in Portugal, you definitely remember that there are these patches of green that sometimes they may be very narrow, but going through them might cost you a minute even, right? So it's like 10 meters and you will be plowing through that with, with a time of one minute because there's just so many blackberry bushes and thorns that it's impossible to get through. But if enough people go through that, then, you know, after 50 runners or even 20 runners actually that took this route choice, it's easy, right? You just run through it without wasting any time. So do you take it into account? I'm used to start quite late. Yeah. So... Yeah, Estonia was maybe a good example. Um, there was a lot faster if we started late. Um, there were lots of tracks through those open yellow areas where it was really hard to get through when you were one of the first ones that started. Uh -huh. um, yeah, middle distance was probably the best example for that. Um, where I had big tracks and Kasper had to fight through the bushes. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, like uh, Estonia is kind of extreme, uh, extreme in that case. Like uh, I had some teammates that started almost first on the long distance and had no tracks, and they were like uh, they were like plowing through some two meter high grass, and uh, yeah. it was a highway for me when I got there. So, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, you definitely have to <laughs> have to consider that in some types of trains. But I think for uh, at least most uh, types of forest that I run in, uh, it's not. It's not a really big uh, difference. Yeah, I mean, in Scandinavia, it usually doesn't help yeah. a lot, right? Uh, Same probably goes for Switzerland, especially those open areas. You don't care, right? Yeah, exactly. But I think where I live, there are lots of thorns or more thorns than in the Alps. So uh -huh. there it could be an, an advantage if you yeah. start late. But yeah, the Alps, mm -hmm. I don't think that, that it's a problem there. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting uh, thing. Like when when you when you're on a training camp and you're training for a competition, then you usually don't have that much tracks, and then you come to the competition and suddenly there's like a highway. Yeah. So yeah, that was a bit of a challenge in Estonia for, because you're like you're testing route choice and so, and you find that okay, going around was a lot faster, but at Eok it will be faster to go straight because there will be tracks. True. So, yeah. So you do so, adapt to that. Yeah, you do have to think about that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Perfect. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you definitely have times when you're not picking the right route choice. What do you think contributes to that? What stops you from picking the best route choices all the time? It's a tricky one, I know. Really hard to say. <laughs> like what, um, what, uh, like, why do you choose the wrong route? Why do I choose the wrong route? Yeah. Sometimes. Why? Why sometimes okay. it happens that you do not take the best route choice? Well, I, I guess it's uh, because I haven't looked at enough routes before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I. Uh, um, or if you don't take enough time to choose the route. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but often, often uh, you uh, the, often the longer you look at the route, the uh, the harder it is to pick a route choice. So sometimes it's good to just uh, take the first thing you see. Uh, of course, not always, but. Um, that's actually an interesting one. I want to stop here yeah. because there is also something that um, we do as at least my family, that for example, when you're, when you were running like the long distance and we can see that there is definitely a long lag ahead of us and we're looking at the route choice. If we see just one route choice along the lag, we always force ourselves to find at least the second one. Because mm -hmm. we know that the course setter would be thinking about it and, and wouldn't leave the the, route, the 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 leg to have just one simple route choice. So we always try to find an alternative and then decide whether the first one that we saw is actually still valid or maybe the second one is better. Do you also try to do that? Or you know, if you see something that like fits from the get-go, you just go with it. For me, it's really important that I see several route choices before I decide. Yeah, usually, uh, that's, that's also kind of the... But that is also part of the technical training ahead that you you're able to to right away see all the routes. Uh, uh, and if I don't see more than one route, then yes, I would probably look at the uh, or tr try to find another one as well and uh, be able to compare them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
but I uh, I think it's uh, like that that again that uh, intuition that you build up by looking at a lot of brushes that's extremely important and you then it shouldn't take too long to like intuitively see the the fastest route and then uh, it will be the best one most of the time. Yeah, of course. If you work hard towards that, it will definitely help. Um, so the last question I have before we got in, get, go into the, the root analysis that is still ahead of us is uh, do you, when you're realizing that the root choice, do you make any alternative plans like the, the fallback plans? So you kind of try to predict what might go wrong and how you're going to um, prevent that or if it, if, if it already happens, then fix it. Of course, I think about the difficulty of the route, what could be um, hard in this route and where do I have to be really sure where I am mm -hmm. and where can I run a bit faster without knowing exactly where I am. But yeah, I don't really try to predict what could happen and what if this happens then, um, yeah. I think I'll, I do that. I'll give you examples from, from, <laughs> for myself. So for example, let's say I'm running uh, down the hill, uh, but it's not a very steep, so it's not like, like the whole hillside, but I'm running along the ridge of the hill and, and the ridge of the hill splits into two, right? And they are running like similar directions. So for me, for example, and, and I know I want to go along the right one, but let's say it's uh, light green and the visibility is not very good then I immediately see on the map that there is a risk that I, I might turn into the wrong kind of nose or the wrong ridge. And that's a signal for me that I have to pay uh, a very close attention, for example, to the compass, right? So that I'm sure that I'm running along the proper ridge. Another example that comes to my mind is I'm going down the hill and I'm trying to catch a control that is in a galley or just find a galley for whatever reason. Maybe it's, uh, uh, it, it's my attack point to the control. And then um, there are several galleys close by, right? And there is a risk that I might run into the galley that is 30 meters to the left or 50 meters to the right. Um, and then I also try to plan for it. So for example, let's say that, that there should be a control in the galley uh, and I get into the galley. And if there is no control, I, for example, immediately know that therefore I need to turn left because it, it, it's the only possibility, right? And, and I don't, don't waste time figuring, trying to figure it out standing next to the control. So that's the things I'm talking about. Do, do you think about it like, like this mm. as well? I think that's what I um, what I think is um, the difficulty of the route. Like to see what is hard and where can I make mistakes and where do I have to be really sure where I am. I think, yeah, that's exactly what I meant with that. Okay. Yeah, that's a good example you made there. I I, uh, I think that a lot, like if, if you, yeah, if there's um, if there's two uh, if, if there's some rocks uh, uh, in near the control and I'm going to have the rock that's furthest to the left, for example, and I hit the rock and I the, I don't find a control there, then I know immediately okay that uh, I have to go to the left because because uh, yeah if it's not this one it has to be to the left for me yeah so that's yeah. Uh, that's uh yeah that's uh something I think everyone mm. thinks about a little bit at least. Okay, awesome. All right, so let's tackle some root choices. Um, Simona is our technical person, so you're going to share the screen. And the way I want to uh, approach this is I want to I, I want you to uh, pick the root choice that you would uh, also pick during the race but also explain which kind of features you would definitely want to catch while running it um, so that uh, we can see what elements you're paying a lot of attention to and what elements you're just ignoring because they are maybe not important while running the line. I kind of tried to see... You can um, zoom in, of course, if you want to. ...fast parts around the line. So the first thing I see is that there are marshes to the right and it looks quite flat and also quite fast. There's not that many objects. So yeah, this is the first route that I see. Yeah, me too. I like I also I, I try to find or to like look in lines kind of towards the the control. So I I see I, I try to see like the runability like in a line towards the 
controls or immediately immediately uh, immediately you see this mm -hmm. line of marshes and this road uh and uh, this line over here with the marsh and then also uh, this yellow area so it's quite a lot of features here that have rather fast runability uh so yeah i i do think i would go to right now uh yeah that's also quite an easy route i would say yeah it's much yeah i think so i think have, i think, I think this one is not difficult the time if you take the straight one yeah so here it's uh yeah um if, if you're thinking of a, like a straighter route then you you, you see that you get uh, exit where you have to go across some contours and across some green areas and uh, um, and there's quite a lot of uh, places where the runability slows you down a bit so um, I do think even right this a little bit longer I think yeah I think it's a better one mm. all right and if you would go to the right uh, what elements would you be looking for while running mm, first the marsh, I would say, um, compass with the compass out to the marsh, and then, um, yeah, the yellow edge. Um, well, we, if if you get to the marsh, are you trying to figure out exactly where you are, or just more or less because you know that no, the yellow edge less. will catch you? More or less, and okay. I would try to see the cliffs to my left, uh -huh. and then yeah, just follow the marsh and. Um, look at the compass that the direction is right, and then yeah, of course the the street, and there I can already plan for on the course. How would you access the street? Because actually the street is not accessible straight forward. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think I would go to the left of that small lake. I would go into the lake, swim for a bit, and then <laughs> back in there again. Just like the stone. <laughs> to cool down. Yeah, yeah. No, I, the, I don't know. I think uh, the fastest, if, if the lake is shallow near the end, which is usually mm -hmm. I think it's the fastest one. I think I will go there, mm -hmm. actually. It's not uh, not great that uh, that's a possibility, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I think I will go around the lake. Yeah. Safer. yeah, it's uh, yeah. a little bit safer to do that. Though. Or if I see that it's shallow enough, then I would take the, yeah, the lake right, but... yes. yeah. And then along the road, it's super easy. You have the time to read the map ahead. And exactly. then I think it's also an, an easy part where you basically need to just follow the compass until the yellow area. Yeah, so, so I will yeah. go out here already and mm -hmm. out on the fields and then... Mm -hmm. You have a you have a river here, and there's a lot of features that are guiding you towards this mosher. And if you're, yeah. if you're a little too far to the left, you hit this uh, wall here, and mm. uh, so no no real possibilities of uh, of like uh, getting lost here. So you have a uh, quite a long way where you're able to read ahead on this route. Uh, yeah. Also over here, like if if you get if you get a little bit lost over uh, over in this area, then you just have to continue in the right direction, then you know mm -hmm. that you'll be picked up either by this area and there's or this also area. A hill to the right, so yeah, so it's, exactly. Uh, it's quite yeah. Small. So it's a uh, it's a lot of uh, like features that you know you're gonna that 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 you know are gonna catch you up again. So true. All right. Hopefully, not all of the uh, routes I've picked will be that easy. So let's go into the second one. And again, you might need to zoom in a little bit to actually see what's going on. Yeah, first side, I can see the path to the right of the line. Yeah, so, so this is uh, in Uppsala, Uringen, so that you know it's, yeah, or you see that it's uh, it's really flat here and mobility is usually really good. Probably not in the green areas, but I, I, immediately, I, immediately, I immediately see that uh, some kind of straight route would be good here and that I would I would like to take this path here. Uh, so that so then I I know already here that okay that I I know that I just have to get to this point or I mm -hmm. just have to get to the path. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I guess I would I'll probably go. I can't really see the runability, but probably something like this now to the path. 
and then uh, when I'm on the path, then maybe I'll uh, I'll take the rest of the route. So I, I don't I don't have to uh, have taken the whole route before uh, before the control here. I sure. I just need to know the beginning. The day after, and I will go straight. Thank yeah, you. especially in this kind of terrain when there is no really like a, a big feature, a big road, mm -hmm. asphalt road that will allow you to pick the the long route that you know it's a lot a lot to the left or to the to the right. You're absolutely right. In this kind of terrain, usually going getting close to the line is good. Exactly. Um, but I think this is a route where you have to know all the time where you are. Yeah, because exactly. Also on the so path, it's really hard to find out where you are because everything looks the same. Yes. So that that's another part that is really interesting to me. Um, I've been running um, on these maps during the Oringan this year, uh, not the elite class. But um, sometimes I was struggling uh, with what I should actually pay attention to uh, in a forest and which elements are visible enough for me to catch them and which ones are not. So what, what is your experience with this kind of terrain? What, which, which of the features would you be looking for and which ones you would choose to ignore? So in this type of terrain, I think it's uh, impossible to always know exactly where you are mm -hmm. but you have to know uh exactly where you're gonna be like uh to the usual one said yes uh, so uh so you have to look ahead at some bigger features and see okay what what am i going to uh to be able to see out there uh so here you probably take off the path somewhere in this corner here you have a big marsh and you just have to follow the compass over this marsh and then mm -hmm. Uh, of course, while I'm on the march, I, I would probably look uh, or try to see if I can see this knoll here. But if I don't, it's no big deal. I know I'm going to get caught up by a big area over here. Uh, and then again, you're on top of some hill, but it's flat and diffuse. You don't know exactly where on the hill you are. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know you're going to get caught up by the path. Um, uh, but uh, even though you know you're gonna hit the path. It's difficult to know exactly where on the path you're gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna cross. So I would probably mm -hmm. pay pay attention to what uh, direction the path is going to, uh, and what kind of features are around the path. And also the river when I cross it, if it's really close to the path, like over here, or if it's a bit of a gap, or yeah. So here I will be quite uh, uh, thorough with like knowing exactly where I'm crossing this path. All right. So is it safe to say that while crossing the path, you would maybe slow down a little bit to make sure, or, or at least try to figure out where you're crossing the path? Yeah, I would maybe not slow down, but I would uh, um, Pay attention uh, read to more of the map and the terrain when I'm here. Okay. So, um, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, next thing I would look at is probably this marsh here on this ridge i really struggled with this sometimes and w when you said that uh it's hard to know exactly where you are and then you said okay i'm going through the marsh but if i don't see this it's not a big deal because then i have this area but on this area i might also not know exactly where i am so then I, there is a path uh i will try to figure out where i am but again it's hard to be 100 percent sure right so i was exactly struggling with that sometimes i like ran through two three maybe four of these tiny areas and i wasn't able to figure out exactly where i am and i was like i'm looking at the compass and the direction is pretty okay-ish but i feel worse and worse with um, the, the, the the ability to find myself back on the map hmm. but okay he's gone we can continue <laughs> yeah so uh it's, it's really easy to like drift off the uh, the, uh, the direction here and like make yourself believe that you're in the right spot uh so but, but, but if i lose control somewhere out here i would still just power through and uh and uh continue because you know that you're gonna somehow find this path here yeah. uh and when you hit this path you're or if i get unsure over here i will i, I will of course pay attention to this area but i would Maybe especially pay attention to what kind of, or how, what does it look like around this path when I'm crossing it. Yeah. So I know that when I'm when I hit the path, then I know where I'm on the path because I I've uh, really looked at the map, uh, uh, what kind of details are next to the path. So if I if I know that I ran up some hill and then a flat area and then cross the path, then 
I, I will I will immediately know that I'm here again. So this area is quite an easy place to like uh, catch up again and uh, and realize where you are again. So it's not it's not the end of the world if you lose control over here. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then I would just continue. Um, because yeah, I would find out where I am. And uh, then I see those two small paths as well, where I really have to be sure where I cross the path. So there I pay some extra attention to what is around the path. And so which paths do you mean? Can you point to them? Um, these two. Okay. So I want to cross them at this point. Mm -hmm. And then um, here I can see that big marsh that kind of leads me to the control, but I think it's a bit uh, wrong um, thing to be safe of. Like, it's a marsh, but it probably doesn't really look that clear. Yeah, the, it, it was pretty dry. Yeah. So there is a little bit difference in terms of the vegetation, and... but it's mm -hmm. hard to figure out exactly sometimes. Exactly. So I see that big hill to the right. Yeah. That yeah, I want to path pass next to the this hill here. Yeah. Okay. So you greener. know, it, it looks like it's not like you have a favorite feature that you pick. So for example you know that rocks or, or walls of rocks are super visible in this terrain and this is something you focus your orienteering on but it's rather that you're using whatever the map gives you um, but you try to find something that will really stand out and will help you find yourself on on a, on the leg right i think in this terrain it's also really important to look around and um see all the features around you and kind of use all of them to locate yourself yeah. into like into this control and into most controls uh, i think uh, the safe safest details are often the bigger contour details like this one yeah mm -hmm. uh, like rocks or small knolls or small marshes and green areas it, it, can, it can it can all look a bit different from uh one mapper to another and uh it could be that uh yeah that that's uh, some walls are a bit too small to be on the map and some rocks are a bit, bit too small so we don't know exactly what's on the map or not but a, a, like a, a prominent detail like this would uh you, you would be sure that this thing is on the map and this thing is a uh, it's a safe uh safe bet so uh, i'm laughing i'm laughing because some time ago i've been living with a, um, for, for a few weeks, we went there to Sweden uh, and we lived with a family where um, the, the, the man was the map maker for many years. And this was my first time in Sweden back then, so quite a long time ago. And I, and I asked him because I ran a few training sessions and I had a huge problem to distinguish the knoll, the rock and the small, small hill. Like for me, it, I couldn't figure out what's the difference in the terrain between them. And so I asked him, and he said, well, it's kind of the same thing sometimes. <laughs> and it depends yeah. on the map maker. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I totally agree. <laughs> yeah, that's the, yeah, that's how it is. So you, you have to, uh, yeah, or it's, it's uh, if you have the possibility to pick out something uh, safer like this, then that's, uh, that's what you should do. Cool. All right, let's uh, go to the next one. So a little bit more the tricky. thing I see is the big valleys and the path that goes or that keeps almost the elevation. And uh, the first thing I see is uh, the, this big valley here that I I would like to avoid going down here and up again. So <laughs> uh, so the, the first route I see is, uh, is this one here that goes around and then down. It mm -hmm. looks like you don't take a lot of climb and it's uh it's quite flat and downhill from there and it's quite close to the line so mm -hmm. that's what i would do um that would probably take some time and look for something else as well just to be sure uh, so we have uh we have actually a route here that i think it's 
I think it's too long. It could go all the way around there. It's not that much climb. Um, it's a yeah, little you, snow you climb. You probably right? save maybe a. I think it's twenty five. Maybe a bit minutes. climb, but maybe not, because you also go yeah. up a bit there. So I, I'm I'm pretty confident I would, I will try something to the right there. Uh, almost back again the same way I came from ten to eleven and then over here I think, then down to this one. Uh, yeah. Down the ridge. All right, Simona, you're the same one. <laughs> yeah, I'm still thinking about the left for choice because it looks like it's almost flat until you're here, and then you only climb from here to there, and the climb yeah is quite easy as it's on the road, but then from here. There's a bit more climb again, as you, I think you wouldn't go through the green here. Maybe down on the path and then up again. Mm -hmm. So I think I would also choose the right one. Because it's nice to go out from the control if it's nice for us. <laughs> and uh, then it's really easy to to hit the control from above. Okay, good. So in, in this one, you basically um, decided by how far away from the line the route choice is and how much climb does it add up, right? Uh, exactly. Yeah, maybe more about the climb, actually. Than more the... about the climb. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I, yeah. Uh, yeah and, and this is also quite a lot further away than this one. So. True. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Uh, let's go to the, the fourth one. Yeah, there's also quite a lot of climb. Yep. So this, I think, is the first thing I look at. That I can avoid some climb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I would go straight. Ah, oh, it's from here. <laughs> from here to there. No, from the bottom, from six, oh, seven. six, seven. Okay. Yeah, look like the nine, eight. <laughs> and uh, totally wrong. Uh... It's quite a, a difficult route. You have like a, you have a route here that, uh, that looks really tempting. Where yep. you uh where you save a lot or you, you go around this big hill. Uh I think I would actually go uh go up uh, up the hill here and uh and take the climb and uh I'm not I'm not sure about how good the slope is in uh, in Poland, but uh probably go in the slope here and then maybe find a small opening in the green there and then uh, straight into the control. Um yeah. Yeah. Uh, if the forest is as I as I think it is, then I think I would go, I would go straight because you do take a little, quite a little bit of a little climb up again. It's not that far down from the top of the hill, and um, uh, it's about uh, fifty meters. So now I see I a route I that I actually haven't seen yet. It's uh, when it goes over here and around. Ah. But yeah. I think <laughs> I will go straight over. Yeah, yeah but it's still twenty five meters from here. So you can also take it from there and take those 25 meters extra, I think. Yeah, yeah I think so. What about the route that goes left from point number six and yeah, skips the, the first two? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, you could do that. Then there you, um, yeah, I, yeah, you, you, could go, you could go up here and then. Uh, yeah, you have lots of paths down. to use over there as well. Um, yeah, but I think you don't really save that much climb because. Yeah, what 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 made me a bit worried about that one was that you go up a bit here, mm. um, but uh, yeah, it could be uh, could be good as well if you go all the way left. Exactly, if you go all the way left, then you you have path almost all the way. Yeah, 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 and here you, you go. Uh, yeah, right here you go up a bit and down and then, yeah. Um, I I think I would still go. Uh, Go this one down, mm -hmm. but uh, even even if I go left, but uh, um, but I don't think it's a really big difference there. 
and uh, and, uh, and as I remember, the forest in Poland it's uh, quite runnable, so the paths are not really that much faster than the the forest here, uh, except from the green and rocky areas here. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. It's not bad usually. Yeah, in that case, I would go straight, definitely, or try to save a bit of climb here, um, and maybe see the edge of the fence there, and then up from there. Yeah. Yeah. So um there is there there is one thing I wanna I wanna point out. So I'm not sure if you're reading the map correctly, but the area right below point number seven is actually a huge canyon or gully. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. So 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 you're kind of going down on, until the, the last part. Yeah, exactly, until yeah. the fence. Yeah, down. Yeah. But here it's in the slope. So yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, so, I I uh, I, read, uh, I read it the wrong way. <laughs> that's um, what I thought. This is the ridge, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you have to take those fifty meters of climb. Yeah, this is down. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I would uh I would still but still yeah, the same route. It should even be better if you but don't I, have I think to it climb. changes, right? I think it changes yeah. because if you think about it this way, then um, going through the forest makes more sense. Yeah, or for it should me, be, it makes a lot more sense. It should be if almost think about it the other uh, way. I don't think I would take the route. Yeah. Or uh, yeah, you still have to climb, or would have to climb a lot here. It should but... be the the same uh, same route choice, even if it's the opposite the uh, opposite. But uh... but it's hard to picture it the other way around <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't before. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, and, and it yeah, was quite interesting yeah. because this one is not only about the route choice, but it's actually quite tricky to get exactly into the control as well. Yeah. Over, over here, uh, I've never been to Australia, so I have no idea what uh, or how, how the runability is in the forest. Um, so the so this route could be or one route route could be completely different from one terrain to another even if it looks the same on the map um yeah. but um yeah i'll say this that if any australians are watching us just let us know what the terrain would be <laughs> here because i'm yeah. curious myself as well yeah i, I can I... see that there's a lot of rocks and green areas in yeah. the slope i would probably right. avoid the bushes in australia yeah. yeah, maybe. I don't want to <laughs> find any spiders there. <laughs> <laughs> I think I will go to, uh, to the right, uh -huh. and then over here. Mm, same. And then the, a little bit down to this yellow area here. Yeah. And then I will go around and up the mm -hmm. hill, then into the control from here. Exactly what I thought. Yeah, into the control. The control is not super tricky because you have yeah, this yeah, big not. area here. Uh, that you. Middle. Yeah, and you have. You get this hill before control, and then uh, you have this big hill here you have to uh, run next to. So, uh, uh, this entrance uh, is also quite a safe one, I think. Yeah, so you basically avoid the hill on the left side, go more to the right, avoid the rocky and greenish area in the middle of the leg. Exactly. And yeah. so, focus on the runability, and as you said, entering the control as long as you check the the right elements so this yellowish area towards the end of the leg and then the path and then the gully it should be pretty doable mm. right exactly all right cool yeah and the leg is from the start to the first control i was really hesitant about this leg so I'm, i i wonder what you will pick <laughs> Yeah, the first thing I see is the big hill right yeah. before the control. And I think I would like to avoid that. Because there's lots of rocks. But sometimes in Czech Republic, it's also really nice to run between the rocks. Um, but I think I would like to attack the control a bit from the left. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like um from here and then up there. 
Uh -huh. I think that would be my favorite entrance to the control. Um, I think I might but... actually go uh, all the way to the right here. Um, I did see this possibility and then somewhere left, but I think I think I would want to go down here and then and then down this yellow area here to here. Because uh, I don't think you get, I don't think you save any time or at least not a lot of time, but like going further up in this, uh, yeah. this valley here. And then you have a really nice uh, climb here. You get the climb quite gradual on the path True. all the way up. And then, I would, yeah. I think I would do that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Um... And yeah, I I think this is the best route choice. Uh, going from from no. the left <laughs> because I I think it's better because it gives you a lot of opportunities to run fast. So you have lots of paths. The climb is not very steep. Um, the, the, there is a field along the way, and you go uh, along the field as well. So easy running down the hill as well. Uh, so I, I think it is the best path, but I didn't choose it. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> I basically went middle, uh, so along the yeah. line more or less yeah. uh, through the hill. Um, yeah, I, I was I was hesitating too much, and in the end, even though I saw uh, the route choose to the right, I picked the middle one. Um, I realized it well, so I found the control without any problems. But I lost here like one and a half minutes to to the best uh, route choice. So, so sorry to the best split. Of course, the guy might have been running a little bit faster than me. That's possible. I'm not the fastest out there, um, but I still think that the right one was probably faster. Yeah, and also th this is a little bit. Uh, uh, I'm a little bit of a nerd for saying this, but the, uh, one thing I I learned from Czech Republic was. Uh -huh. uh, was when you think about the length, the extra length you take uh, on a route uh, when it's going uphill, then as long as you get the extra length uh, that you take uh, also going uphill like this, then it's not, then that extra, those extra meters don't really matter that much because it's more about getting up the hill. So if you, if you run in the forest and it's, uh, it's a uh, fifty percent elevation, and uh, you run around the path, and you get twenty five percent elevation. Then it's then you use the same time to get up the hill, even though it's twice as far to go uh, go around. So yeah, um, so that's also one thing I think is good about this route is that you get the that extra length you get on taking right uh, versus going straight to the left is right. Yeah, exactly. Uphill, so, perfect. Yeah. Perfect comment because I think this is exactly where I screwed up. Because I thought, okay, um, going around is going to save me like five to six contours. And that didn't justify to me uh, going that far away from the line. But what I didn't account for is that I will ta be taking these contours along the path and with less steep of a climb. So I would probably run, uh, whereas going along the line, I was walking up the hill. So yeah. that, that made yeah. a difference. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. So thanks a lot for this. I think it's a great material for everyone and everybody will be able to draw some important conclusions uh, taking in from your experience and from everything we've talked about today. So I'm really grateful that you've uh, decided to join uh, both of you, me today. And and what? Um, I guess we will see each other next time. Casper, uh, we are definitely going to uh, meet again for another individual talk uh, focused more around your persona that's going to be super interested because lots of younger runners uh, are really curious about hearing how you're training and preparing for um, all the kinds of races during the season um, yeah so can't wait for that super grateful for you to join me today thank you very much thank and, you and enjoy your day thanks you too bye-bye Bye. Okay, wow. So I hope you've had as much fun as I did during this chat with Simona and Casper. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like down below. If you don't like it, then hit the dislike. It's also a feedback for us. But the most important part is let us know in the comments which 
element, which part of this video was interesting to you. Did it help? Did it not help? Do you struggle with by yourself with picking up your root choices? And what was this video any help? And maybe you've discovered some things that you didn't know before. It's always interesting to read from the fellow orienteers. And one more time, I want to emphasize how grateful I am to Simona, Kasper and every other person that uh, takes their time to join me and through me share their ideas, insights and any kind of information related to orienteering with all of you wonderful people around the world watching this content. It's really cool that people are so willing to help us grow um, together as a whole community. So thanks a lot uh, to Simona, to Casper, and to anyone else that contributes the time. And that's all from me today. See you in the next video.